Passover just days away starts at sundown on Monday the 22nd. The highlight is the Seder, a festive meal where families retell the story of the Jewish people's exodus from slavery in Egypt. CBS News' Lisa Rosner shows us how this year the holiday is more meaningful than ever. On the holiday of Passover, Jews do not eat leavened bread. One reason is because as they fled from slavery in Egypt, there was no time to wait for the dough to rise. Matzah is the result of dough carried on their backs and baked in the sun. That thirst for freedom felt deeply by Natalie Senandaji of Great Neck, who survived the Nova Music Festival massacre October 7th. When I was you know, running from Hamas on October 7th, I tried to take like a few like photos or videos. And one of the photos was about three hours into running or so, we ended up on this main road with hundreds of other people from the festival. And automatically, like I thought to myself, like, oh my God, this looks like the exodus of Egypt. The exodus symbolic of the resilience of the Jewish people through generations and the United Jewish Appeal of New York, or UJA, is giving people an outlet to channel their pride through the seventh annual matzah challenge. People are asked to share their personal matzah creations for a good cause. For San Andaji, it provides some comfort too. For me, it's um, matzah with the shahar um, chocolate spread. Not the Nutella chocolate spread, but specifically the shahar because it's just so good and it just has that taste and like memory of like being a kid again. And we're all having matzah, but like every Jew from like every background, whether you're Iranian or um, Moroccan or Polish or Hungarian, like we all took this one thing, matzah, and managed to transform it into so many different types of like snacks and foods. And in 2024, there's even more types of kosher for Passover foods. One of the oldest makers of matzah, Manischewitz, which dates back to 1888, is hoping to connect with younger generations and non-Jews. We're seeing trendy things pop up like the Jewish delicatessen style foods. It's our legacy, it's our inheritance. So it's not something that we're not making up that we make the best matzo ball soup. We do make the best matzo ball soup. The company rebranded everything from the soup to the matzo boxes in hopes of making kosher cool. We really feel like uh, Passover could be an everyday brand for, and we know, like I said before, that we're part of the zeitgeist of, of American dishes already. And what we are doing is inviting culturally curious consumers that may not be Jewish, but want to uh, explore Jewish cuisine. And we invite them to try our matzo balls or our potato latkes. Inviting all to the Seder table this Passover. Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. The aforementioned Lisa Rosner here now to talk with us more about positive new ways to celebrate the holiday this year for, as you just heard the guest on the, the piece say, for Jews and non-Jews alike. Lisa, good to have you with us. How are you doing? It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> that was a great piece, all-encompassing. Um, so what are some of the uh, the creative ways in which people can celebrate Passover this year that are maybe a little bit new in the years past? Yeah, well, this holiday, we are making it fun this yeah, year. As you saw in the piece, um, there's a challenge by the United Jewish Appeal of New York, also known as UJA yep. called the matzah challenge okay, so, what, is so uh, what you can do is you get creative you take matzah and this is for everyone and you put whatever you want on it avocado uh, brittle chocolate peanut butter and uh, you post a picture of it on social media you tag uh, UJA you put the hashtag matzah challenge you can see here some pizza matzah the people really get into this and then uh, when you post that it triggers an $18 donation to the UJA for matching donors and that money goes to all kinds of causes including helping people who are in need for Passover yeah get them their matzah so they can enjoy as well. <laughs> the pizza looks great, to be very honest with you. It's uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate's not so bad either. Yeah. Um, so you've got a bunch of different matzahs here. Um, just mm -hmm. kind of give me a little uh, kind of a, a run through here of what we're looking at. Yeah, so these are new products from Manischewitz. This is one of the oldest companies known for making kosher for Passover yep. foods. Dates back to 1888. And what they did is they want to connect generations. The older generation knows this brand, but younger generations generations and non-Jews as well don't. So they've put some staple um, Yiddishisms, as they say, on some of these products, like made for noshing. Um, <laughs> they have some gluten-free products. They have uh, frozen foods that people can eat for kosher for Passover. And, you know, just like we have things like Taco Tuesdays with our family, mm -hmm. they want to see people year-round have something like Matzah Mondays, have yeah. Jewish food be a part of uh, 
all Americans' lives. And who is not familiar with Manish huh? <laughs> I mean, are, they, are the younger generation, are they really not that up to speed with, with Manish Evans? That's what they told me. Uh, that they said, you know, they need, they need to connect more. Universal. Um, so for people following these eight days of Passover, they're, they're clearing their house of any ingredients involving leavened bread. So how about families on a budget? I guess that's the key. Everybody's been talking about, obviously, inflationary prices mm -hmm. you know, with groceries and things of that nature the past few months. So if you're on a budget, how can you celebrate as well? Well, you know, we've reported on it, grocery prices rising. Yeah. So uh, there are some great organizations out there, Masbia Soup Kitchen and the Metropolitan Food Council. They are raising money right now um, to get people in need food. And uh, Food Council has 230 distributions, free distributions of food all across the five boroughs. Uh, so they are there for people who want to just come out and uh, get the food in a dignified way because they have to clean out their entire house yeah. and make sure all the products products uh, don't have leavened bread. And like you said, with the matzah challenge, too, money's going, obviously, to help people that are that are less fortunate as well be able to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Now, Passover, it's all about traditions, and I know some people have different traditions mm -hmm. than others. Do you have any that, that you kind of go back on from your childhood or even in adulthood that, uh, that you really look forward to? Um, that is a great question. So, I mean, one thing about Passover, you talked about it earlier, we tell the story of the Seder, yep. but we also sing songs, very traditional songs together, mm -hmm. and uh, that is something that I really love. So the Rogers have good voices? <laughs> yes. Is that, is that true? <laughs> yes, we do, actually. <laughs> you and, lead uh, or you, you heard more background music? Well, <laughs> one of the songs, you put the youngest person on the spot to yep. sing that song because it is about the younger people in the story um, in this process of freedom. Yep. So uh, when I was the youngest one, I did get my solo, but uh, my cousin Raquel, she'll Enjoyed this shout out. She, in later years, has been the one doing all the singing. So that, is, that is a great tradition. Are there others, uh, other traditions out there that you've heard of that you were like, oh, you know what, that's kind of interesting. I would try that. Yeah, so actually, one rabbi, um, the Seder plate, one yeah. rabbi I learned recently said to put an orange at the Seder plate, um, and that is symbolic of LGBTQ rights, nice. uh, welcoming all to the Seder table. So that was something. Also, some people put coffee at the table um, to symbolize our fight against anti Semitism. Resilience, that waking up to what we're dealing with but powering through. It's great. There's so many elements to it. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for bringing it to our attention. We appreciate My pleasure. it, Rose. Uh, <laughs> And thank you so much for watching here this morning. Uh, Lisa Rosner joining us for this very special Passover segment. All of our Passover stories, you can head to our website at cbsnewyork.com. They are right there for your viewing pleasure. And we will be right back right after this.